Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Jim Scanlon, superintendent of the Westchester Area School District. Thanks so much for coming out uh, to, to, to our Westchester Cyber Program open house for elementary. Uh, we're going to please make sure that uh, everybody is, is muted and your cameras are off to conserve bandwidth. Uh, there's also a QR code that you'll see on the screen. You'll see that periodically throughout the presentation. Uh, you can use that QR code to uh, enter questions as we go through the presentation tonight. Also, there is a link uh, where you can actually add some, uh, some questions in that link uh, as well, and that is up on the screen now. Uh, we'll tell you that uh, cyber programming is something that has been part of our, our comprehensive plan in the school district uh, when we wrote it two years ago, but it was really uh, being programmed for grade six through 12. Uh, cyber education for elementary students is not something strategically under, under uh, pre-COVID conditions that we were considering but I will tell you that it was part of our six through 12 plan. So we have been working on with our teachers on cyber programming since last summer. Uh, so it is, not, it is not something new to us. It's something that, uh, that, that we believe we, we've got the, uh, the pieces in place to make it happen. Uh, I know that many of you uh, may be considering a cyber program because we're not sure how the opening of school is going to be. I will tell you that we just got some new guidance this afternoon uh, that is going to is going to uh, mandate six feet of social distancing in our schools, which means we are uh, we are going to either open our schools with some kind of a hybrid model uh, where kids are in some days and kids are going to be home some days, or an all remote learning model. Uh, the cyber program is different than than a remote learning model. We want to make sure we we clarify that with everybody tonight. A cyber program is is uh, designed to be more flexible for people and uh, uh, some more asynchronous kind of learning in there. Teachers will be uh, checking in. Uh, teachers will be delivering the, uh, the digital curriculum uh, for you and, and your, your, your children to uh, work through, uh, but it's, it does give you a lot more flexibility than, uh, than just a, a remote model that, uh, that we had uh, last spring. So uh, with that, uh, let's, let's begin. Uh, we will have, you'll hear from uh, Dr. Rebecca Eberly. Uh, she is our cyber elementary program administrator. She is the principal at, at Fern Hill Elementary School. Uh, and, and you'll hear from her tonight about, about the cyber program. Uh, again, when, when you look at cyber options out in the community, there are, there are several cyber charter schools that are available. And some people have emailed me and they said, well, what's the difference between a cyber charter and, and your cyber program? Uh, I will tell you that uh, all of those cyber programs, particularly at the elementary school and also with our program, uh, it does require that some kind of a learning coach at home. We need an adult to try to help get the kids access into, into the curriculum, into the, into the either Schoology or uh, Seesaw uh, uh, applications that are out there. So it does require a, a, a strong partnership with the family and with the, with the school. Now for us, because it's our teachers that are teaching this, it is the curriculum in the Westchester Area School District. Uh, when COVID-19 is over, for those of you that are looking at this just for a temporary fix, uh, when it's over, the transition back into our schools is much easier because again, we don't have to move uh, transcripts, we don't have to uh, move courses. Uh, it is, uh, it, it's a much smoother application because uh, again, it's our teachers and it's our program. Uh, you, you have access to, uh, in a cyber program here in Westchester, any of the support services, uh, any of the clubs and sports that, that may run this, uh, this summer so, or this fall. Uh, so if we are able to run some after-school activities in clubs, even though you're in that cyber program, uh, you'll be able to, to, uh, to bring your child into school and, and participate in any of those that are offered for, for kids who would be in, in, the, in the brick and mortar. Uh, again, our, our teacher quality is, is the number one indicator of student success. Uh, we are very confident in our teachers, and I will put our teachers out there against uh, anybody in the southeastern part of Pennsylvania uh, in, in terms of, of quality service for students. Um, let, let's go to the next slide, Chris. When you look at some of the points of pride in our district, uh, these are just some of the, the awards that we get. We are, uh, our district is, is recognized nationally. It's recognized across the state, uh, recognized for its music programs. And these are just some of the, uh, some of the, the things that we get recognized for. And, and our, on our website is just full of that. 
And as, and as parents uh, in our schools, you know that uh, you, have a, you have a quality education here in Westchester. When you look at uh, some of the data from, uh, from other, other cyber schools, the charter schools that are out there, if you look at the blue bars uh, here, this is the English language arts and math scores. Uh, you, these are for third grade, uh, the state test that's, that's done. Our scores are, are, uh, are very high, much higher than, than state averages, uh, and much higher than, uh, than any of the, uh, uh, the cyber charter schools that are out there. And some would say, well, hey, you know, but, but you're comparing your brick and mortar kids to a cyber school. Uh, that is true. And uh, we will actually have some data this year with, uh, with the cyber that we're running K-12 this year uh, to, to put some comparisons in there. But I think the biggest advantage is, it, again, it's, it's our curriculum, it's our teachers, our programs, and the transition back into our schools, which we believe is the best place for elementary kids to learn, is going to be much smoother um, if you, rather than coming from uh, one of the cyber charter schools that are out there. Uh, and, I, and I won't spend a lot of time on fourth. Fourth grade's the same thing. Our scores are, are, are very high. We're the blue bar. And, and the other cyber charter schools are, uh, are not as high as Westchester. And I think we have a fifth, a fifth grade slide, similar kinds of results. You can just see the blue. Uh, we are the blue bar on the left and uh, the other schools are, are the other bars to the right of that. Uh, again, the activities, you have access to all of the different activities. These are just uh, some, some photographs of some of, the, some of the wonderful things that take place in our schools and for, for those of you that have some, uh, some older or intermediate uh, children, you see that uh, lots of partnerships with fire companies. We have a wonderful music program, choral program. Uh, and, and again, if you, even if you're in the cyber school program, things that are happening in the schools, you do have access to those uh, to, to come back and enjoy that um, as, and, and get some of that socialization that you might miss in a cyber program. And if I may, Dr. Scanlon, I'm going to introduce, uh, my name is Sarah Miss, and I'm the Director of Elementary Education in the Westchester Area School District. And I have the opportunity tonight to introduce the people that are behind our cyber program. First, I would like to introduce our Instructional Technology Coordinators, Dr. Mary Beth Clifton, Mr. Chris Cromwell, and Mrs. Ashley Melanson. They are the brains behind our program. They have uh, been very instrumental in creating this program in such a short amount of time. And Dr. Rebecca Eberle, as Dr. Scanlon mentioned, is the principal at Fernhill Elementary School, but she is also going to be our K-5 Cyber Program Administrator. And at this time, uh, before I introduce her or let her take over the slideshow, I would uh, again uh, welcome you to the, our cyber program. Uh, I know that it is going to be a very positive experience for your child. Dr. Eberly. Thank you, Dr. Missett. Thank you, Dr. Scanlon, for welcoming us here tonight. Um, as mentioned, I am Fernhill's principal. I'm headed into my 11th year there at Fernhill. It's such a great community. I'm also a mother of three in the Westchester Area School District. So I have a child going into sixth grade, going into fourth and one, entering kindergarten for the first time this coming school year. So with all the unknowns, probably very similar to many of you, uh, my husband and I are, it's weighing on our hearts and minds as we're trying to determine what's best for our family. Um, so as an administrator and a parent, I am very excited to present our amazing K-5 cyber program to so many families this evening. As you will note here, just one more time, we have the QR code as well as the link. If you have any questions uh, during the presentation, we have some, our instructional technology coordinator is monitoring the questions and then we'll ask some of those at the end of the time. Obviously, we have many participants here this evening, so we did disable the chat room for that. Also, if you have any personal scenarios or questions that might not be um, general or kind of for the good of the group, feel free to email or reach out to me and I'm happy to speak to you individually as well. 
So to just give you really a general overview of what our cyber program is here in Westchester East School District, first of all, it's a partnership. We recognize that it is a family choice and you really need to think through all of the options and what's going to work best for you. The beauty of our cyber program at the elementary level is that it's flexible. So we've had many parents based on the interest survey that many of you completed, 100% at this point have indicated that they're interested because of the COVID pandemic. And so, as Dr. Scanlon mentioned earlier, the beauty is you'll be able to trans, uh, transition right into our cyber program and then transition seamlessly right back into our, into our school district. It's our teachers, our curriculum, um, and it's going to be a nice, smooth transition. The cyber program, is a, it offers a personalized approach for every student. We will have dedicated Westchester Area School District um, teachers that will be teaching each of our grade levels across the, the district. Um, every day we will have our core subjects just like you would in the brick and mortar. We have our English language arts and we teach that through a reading and a writing workshop. We have our math. Um, again, we teach that through a math workshop approach and of course we have science and social studies. At the elementary levels, we often refer to the unified arts as specials. And so, yes, we will have specials in our cyber program as well. And, and if you have been in the brick and mortar setting, you know that we have a pro social skills program called Second Step, which we will also be using that in the cyber program. And now the burning question of the evening. What is the difference between our K-5 cyber program and the remote learning? And that's a great question because they are very different. The cyber program truly is mostly an asynchronous program, which allows for that flexibility for parents. And so if you have two working parents at home and it's difficult to do things during the day, this will really provide you that flexible approach that you're able to work with your child. There is an expectation, and we'll talk a little bit about this later, um, of what we call a learning coach. And that's a parent or a guardian at home who's able to assist your child through the learning activities and the learning process. You can expect to see a blend of live as well as recorded instruction along with some independent practice. We do anticipate having at least one daily check-in each day with the teacher, the cyber teacher, and you could expect approximately two to four live sessions throughout the week likely to be delivered in a small group. So we wanna make sure this is really personalized, differentiated to meet all of our students' needs. But we do have to form this strong partnership with our parents because depending on your child's independence level, um, and of course their grade level and age, that's gonna really determine how what your level of support is as the um, learning coach at home. And now the remote learning, um, as Dr. Scanlon already indicated, we got word today that um, we'll have to do the six feet of socially distancing and so it looks like we could potentially be opening in some type of hybrid model and so in the spring what we all experienced was you know an emergency kind of remote learning setting where we went right off we were expected to turn our system upside down in a few short days um, we have the best teachers around and they truly made the best of the situation they worked tirelessly to make sure they were engaging our students and connecting with them but what we will see when we move into, if we move into a remote learning, you will see some increased expectations and likely more live instruction with that remote learning. And again, the cyber program is mostly asynchronous um, learning experiences. As Dr. Scanlon also mentioned earlier, one of the great things about our program is that you will have access to all of the same uh, supports that we have in the Westchester Area School District. So you would have a cyber teacher. Um, we're working through that right now, hiring um, one grade level teacher. And some parents have asked, you know, will they get to be with their particular school and the other students in them? Yes, at this point, we're anticipating um, one grade level per you know, one kindergarten teacher, one first grade, and so on. So yes, you would be. We are mirroring the um, guidelines that we utilize in our classroom. So for example, in kindergarten and first grade, the guidelines are 25 students. So if we had an interest of, say, 
50 students in kindergarten, then obviously we would need to look into some additional staffing so that we could make sure we were providing that same setting in the cyber that we are in the classroom. We have a, and we'll introduce it later, but we do have a pupil services open house on Monday where we'll have the opportunity to talk with parents specifically about special education and 504 accommodations, as well as gifted resource information. If any of our cyber students qualify for reading support or ELD, which is our English language development, we'll have access to that as well. So again, we have access to all of the supports that your child would have access to within the brick and mortar setting as well. So in the next, this slide and the next slide, it's just a quick glimpse at what a typical day could look like. These are on the website, and I wanted to just point out, while the orange is truly the live, I want to remind everyone that this is mostly an asynchronous program, and so we do expect one daily live check-in and approximately two to four live check-ins throughout the or live lessons, excuse me, throughout the course of the week. And so this is an example of what a kindergarten and so we might start off the day with a morning meeting, and that would be live with our teacher, checking in, seeing how everyone is doing. And then maybe that day, um, the teacher would share the information and what the learning looks like for the day. And maybe your child would have a small group differentiated instruction lesson with the teacher. And so this was just an example. You can find these on the website. But these are just examples as to what your day, your child's day may look like in the cyber setting. This is a K-1 example. And here is our second, third, and fourth, fifth example. And so another, again, to reiterate, it will be our teachers and also our curriculum and all of our programs. So we have a foundations program that we utilize in kindergarten, first and second grade, which is our core phonics program. And so our cyber teachers have been trained extensively utilizing that program and how to do so in a cyber setting because teaching online is obviously very different than teaching in the classroom. And so our we have cyber authors, who two of which I will introduce here in a minute, who have been working all summer to digitize our curriculum and really a lot of our uh, classroom teachers have been participating in professional development and learning experiences to make sure they're prepared to be the best cyber educators that they can be. So at this time, I would like to introduce a second grade teacher from Westtown Thornberry. Her name is Ms. Ms. Kristen DeMai, and then also Mr. Matt Rogers, who is a teacher at Glen Acres. Both of them will be speaking to us. Currently, they are, both of them are working on authoring our cyber content. So, Mrs. DeMai. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Like Dr. Eberly said, I am Kristen DeMai. I teach second grade at Westtown Thornberry Elementary School, and I've been working over the summer on as a digital author for our cyber program, which we are so excited about launching this school year. Um, you know, we're excited about the new program and cannot wait to roll it out and be able to teach students virtually. So within the last couple of weeks, just to give you an idea, I've been working um, together with a bunch of incredible educators in Westchester Area School District. We've been working together, collaborating, and learning from one another while creating lesson layouts um, for cyber teachers and giving teachers really a wide variety of activities that are user-friendly, flexible, and easy for parents and students to navigate. Uh, one of my favorite parts about this cyber program is the flexibility that it allows. And students will, like Dr. Everly said, have a mix of live recorded lessons as well as check-ins from their teacher. Um, just speaking from myself as a teacher, I really do have a strong um, belief in a very in a solid home to school or home to cyber connection. And I think think it's essential for students to really succeed. So the cyber program is set up to ensure that there is a strong connect communication between families and teachers and that each child is receiving the education. Again, like Dr. Everly said, that really meets their needs. So um, students will also have opportunities within the program um, during morning meeting or something like that to really get to know their classmates and their teachers um, just like they would in a normal classroom setting. I am beyond excited that Westchester is providing this cyber K-5 program. Teachers have been working so hard over the summer to really make this program um, the best that it can be for the students and families. And I can't wait to watch our district um, 
grow into a K-12 cyber program, which is amazing. Um, the students are actually absolutely going to love being a part of our cyber community. So uh, Matt Rogers, I don't know if you want to pick it up and talk about um, things at the fourth and fifth grade level, because that was my experience at the second grade level. Thanks, Kristen. So uh, I'm Matt Rogers. As uh, Dr. Eberly, sa Eberly said, I'm a teacher at Glen Acres. Uh, I spent 12 years at West Sound Thornberry, four years at Glen Acres, and then uh, a trimester in my basement here. So uh, it, it was a lot uh, over the spring, uh, thinking about the cyber curriculum versus what that remote learning was in the spring. Uh, it's, it was like being told on a Friday night, hey, guess what? You're moving to Orlando with your family uh, to keep working over there. Uh, but on Monday, you got to move to Orlando, and we don't know if you're going to be there for a week or two weeks or three months. Uh, good luck. Uh, whereas with the cyber curriculum, it's more like uh, saying, hey, you got a bunch of friends that are experienced travelers. Take a couple months and figure out what you want that travel, uh, the travel arrangement to be. Uh, figure out what are you going to need, where you want to go, what do you want to see, uh, who do you know when you're down there. Uh, we've spent hours and hours uh, meeting with supervisors, talking about uh, what are the best practices for this kind of uh, format, uh, and anybody that be teaching this kind of cyber program is choosing to do it because it's their area of strength. Uh, whether it's uh, they're they're a tech nerd like me, uh, or they are deeply invested in the social emotional learning piece that needs to go along with it, and again, like me, uh, so they're looking for the people that are they're going to hit all aspects of teaching well online uh, and, and doing it on purpose. So uh, I, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Uh, nobody was looking for online learning when we started this at the elementary level. And uh, I think that this, this approach is gonna be great, especially for those families that are concerned about what's, gonna, what's, gonna, what's it gonna look like when uh, you know, this week we're in and the next week we're not sure if we're going in or we're not going in and having the, the rotating schedules and possible hybrid models. Uh, this would be just a consistent plan where you sign up for a year it's going to be this for the year uh, mm -hmm. with the flexibility to go back to the classroom if you need to. And I, I believe we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but, but having the, the knowledge right now, what your year is going to look like uh, would, be, would be really huge. So I'll, I'll turn it back to Dr. Eberly here. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. And thank you, Ms. Demai. We really appreciate having you both here with us. And so now the next couple of slides that we will go through, as you can imagine, we have had lots and lots of questions. And so we tried to look through those to share with you the commonly asked questions so we can all have that understanding. One more time, the QR code is present there as well as the link. If you have any additional questions that you would like answered for the good of the group, please go ahead and scan that or click or put in that link and we will get those and answer them at the end. But now we will go through some of the frequently asked questions thus far. So the first one, uh, many people have asked, what is my role as a parent at home? And so we will be asking all of our K to five cyber parents or guardians to sign an agreement. And, and we refer to our parents or guardians at home as the learning coaches. We truly are looking at this as a partnership. Um, and so you'll be signing that form, but you have us, we're here. You have an administrator, you have a cyber teacher, and we are here to support you. And our goal is to make sure that every child has a positive, strong learning experience in the cyber setting. And so we will work with you to help you establish an appropriate learning environment at home. We will help you create a schedule that works for your family because it may look different for every child in our cyber class and we know that. Again, the beauty of that flexibility for this program. Um, you could expend to devote, we said approximately Approximately an hour per day um, but again if you have a kindergartner it's not necessarily going to be an hour per day but that was kind of on average when we were looking over the course of the day so we would build in and help you build in those activities and movement breaks that we know that five through eleven year olds need so that they can learn best and keep their minds and bodies active and for us a key piece is again that partnership we want to make sure that the parent or the learning coach at home is really communicating with us frequently. We really truly believe in educating the whole child in the district as well as in this, this cyber program. And so we're gonna be looking closely and monitoring the student's emotional well-being 
their motivation, their progress, their comprehension, and yes, students in the cyber program will receive grades. Three to five, it will be just like the brick and mortar setting, and then kindergarten first and second, just like the brick and mortar, mortar setting, we will be using our standards-based approach as well as our learning-related behaviors. So again, the learning co coach at home is gonna work very closely with our cyber teacher and myself as the cyber administrator to make sure we're all providing a great experience for your child. Another big question, will I be able to transition back? Yes, you will be able to transition back. While we would love for our families to commit for the entire year, with all of the uncertainty that there is right now going on in the world, we know that might not be a reality. And so, yes, we will be able to transition children back into the brick and mortar, mortar setting when you're comfortable doing so. And we can do that pretty easily. We will aim to do that at a logical break. So something like the end of a trimester or a vacation, just so we can make sure that we're transitioning smoothly back into that classroom. If we have another extended emergency closure, or if we start the school year um, with a closure and we're doing remote learning, will we be able to um, transition back and forth? And so what we are saying right now, the students that start the year in the brick and mortar, those students will transition to the remote online learning with their class Classroom, with the teacher that they were with in the classroom, as well as their, their, cult, their peers um, and the students in their class. So again, the beauty of the cyber program is your, your education will truly go on in, uninterrupted. We will continue on. You won't have to flip back and forth to the brick and mortar, to the remote online learning. You will just continue through with the, the same teacher and you'll continue through with the same curriculum that we have been using. We will provide an iPad for any kindergarten through fifth grade student. We do recognize that um, third, fourth, and fifth are typing a lot at any given time. And so we will additionally be providing them with a keyboard pictured on the screen, as you can see. All of our cyber students will have access to all of the materials that we provide to our brick and mortar students. Um, we're determining where the pickup location would be, but we will be able to provide workbooks and science experiment, experiment materials and items such as those. Um, and just like in the brick and mortar setting, our cyber school teachers will also prepare a supply list for our parents to purchase items such as pencil, pencils and things like that at home. If anybody were to need additional support financially, of course, as a district, we're there. We'll have a caseworker that will work with the cyber school program, and we'll be able to provide that for any families who need that extra support. Similarly to when we are in the brick and mortar setting, as well as when we did our remote learning, we will have our kindergarten, first and second grade students utilize Seesaw as their main platform. And our three, four, five, as well as six through 12, will utilize Schoology as the learning management system. Some people have asked, you know, we had a lot of glitches in the spring. I think both the Westchester A School District as well as both of the two platforms you see in front of you have worked hard to build their bandwidth. And we've seen a, a much lower rate of incidents with the glitching and the problem. So we're anticipating things to be fine throughout. But luckily for us, we have a tech support team that will be able to help us through that. And again, on a cyber program, if there is a small glitch, it's not really that missed instruction like you might see if we were in um, the, the brick and mortar setting, because again, we have that flexibility to work through our learning activities. How will the students learn social skills and have that opportunity to socialize? This is so important to the Westchester Area School District. We truly believe that, again, that we're educating the whole child and we wanna make sure all of our students know how to socialize and also are feeling good about themselves. So again, we will have the second step lessons just like we would in the brick and mortar setting and those will happen once per week. Additionally, our cyber curriculum We've built in different social skills through our literature that we're reading. We um, will encourage you to stay connected to your homeschool. Again, when the COVID 
pandemic um, ends. And we know many of you are headed right back to our brick and mortar setting, which is exactly what we hope. And we wanna make sure that you feel connected. So in order to do that, we will keep your child enrolled in your home school. You'll receive all communications from your child's principal, the main office. So that way you know when the welcome back social is, if we're able to have that with social and safety guidelines the spring fair, math fair, and different events like that, you'll be encouraged to participate based on your comfort level. Additionally, as a cyber community, we will also be planning events and strengthening our community as a school as well. So we really will be working hard to make sure our children are socializing and we're going to keep a very close eye on their social emotional well-being. Lots of questions about what supports are in place for students who've already been identified um, with an IEP, a GIEP, a 504, or our English language development students. Again, we will have a special education meeting on Monday, July 20th at 6 p.m. Tomorrow, we'll send a follow-up email to all of you and we'll make sure you get that information as well. We will work with our IEP teams at each of the home schools to make sure we are differentiating and providing those accommodations and supports. Some may be recommended in the brick and mortar setting and some may be online. So we will work together as a team and you will know um, what your child's day will look like prior to starting the school year. Many parents have asked, what will this cyber program really look like? Is it a teacher that has to split between the brick and mortar and the cyber program? No. We are hiring distinguished teachers that are already teaching in our classrooms. Um, as Mr. Rogers shared earlier, they're going through extensive training to make sure they have best practice and pedagogy of how to teach online because it is very different. And so we've worked hard to make sure we're prepared for that. It will be one classroom teacher. Again, we're going to mirror the enrollment uh, guidelines that we utilize in the classroom. So KM1, we have a guideline of 25 students, two and three, 27, and fourth and fifth grade, 30 students. If, for example, a fifth grade, um, we had 45, we would look to increase the staffing to keep that class size um, at an appropriate number. And in doing so, we would make sure that we would group together schools. So for example, the Fernhill fifth graders would stay together and maybe they would be with the East Bradford fifth graders and other people in their feeder pattern so that we could make sure that they were staying together. Again, we really wanna focus on that community and making sure we can all transition smoothly, seamlessly right back into our school brick and mortar setting when COVID pandemic ends. As we, after today, tomorrow, as I said, we will share an email with all of you that has enrollment information and the application prog process. And so our cyber program is for students within the Westchester Area School District boundaries. There's no cost at all to any of you because we are obviously a public school. Many of you have already filled out the interest form. Thank you so much. That was very helpful information for us. So once we finish up here today, we will have an application going out to you as well as a parent agreement form you will go on you can either access it through our website or again we will send an email and you'll just have to click on the link all of that information we'll gather it you will hear from me um, to receive confirmation of your child's enrollment status again your child will remain enrolled at your home school as well um, at this time we're looking at an august 3rd deadline um, the earlier you're able to set up the earlier um, the earlier you're able to apply and and be confirmed the earlier we're able to determine our staffing needs as well as help get everything set up for that home learning environment as well if you are not a Westchester Area School District student currently, I've had many families reach out to me that have participated in private schools in the area or other cyber programs and are now excited that we're offering one, which is wonderful. And so you would go into to our district website and you would find at the very top, uh, you would just click the link that says new student registration. You would complete that, indicate on there um, that you're interested in our cyber school. You will additionally complete the application process for the cyber school, which again will be found on our website on the cyber um, page link of the website. And you'll complete both of those. And again, you will hear from me to confirm um, your enrollment status. 
If you were to have any additional questions, as I said earlier, you can always reach out to me as well. Here's my email if you forget and can't locate this. We are recording and it will be posted tomorrow on our website. Additionally, we will send it out in our email follow-up as well. And now I believe Mrs. Melanson has been monitoring any questions that have come in. And so we will take a look at those and we should be able to answer a few questions this evening for you that have come in. Thank you, Dr. Everly. Good, good evening. My name is Ashley Melanson, and I am one of Westchester Area School District's Instructional Technology Coordinators. I will be asking Dr. Missit and Dr. Everly some of the most frequently asked questions that were posted in our Google form. In addition, we will make sure that all of these questions are summarized and post to our district webpage under the cyber FAQs. Uh, so first, Dr. Missit, uh, a very frequent question is, can I change my mind after sending my child in person and join cyber later? That's probably one of the most frequently asked questions. Uh, the short answer is yes, but as Dr. Eberle explained during her presentation, is that we would ask that you do that at a natural break during the school year, meaning at the end of a trimester or the uh, end of a break. Um, we do need to know that information or keep it consistent because of our staffing purposes and our allocations that we need to provide for our staffing. Thank you. Uh, another question revolves around live sessions. So um, younger students maybe were not able to make all of the live Zoom meetings. Uh, do, do children have to attend every synchronous lesson or will there be some flexibility? Uh, at the purpose of a cyber school is for flexibility. So the answer is yes. Uh, if a student misses a synchronous lesson, that student will have the opportunity to review that lesson uh, as it will be recorded for everybody. Uh, the next question that we're getting a lot of is how, how has the curriculum been developed for the cyber program? Has it been developed for the entire school year so far? It has not been developed throughout the entire school year. Uh, just recently, over the last, I would say, month and a half, we have um, involved about 40 of our certified teachers, our Westchester area teachers, to author the cyber program. Uh, they have been working diligently to construct the cyber program, the curriculum, for our cyber teachers to teach. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, next, how will the full-time cyber program kids be impacted if the brick and mortar schools have to close and those kids then have to be taught online like last spring? So keep in mind, if we were to go to a remote learning environment like we did last spring, it would be more robust, number one. And number two, that would be for those kids that are not enrolled in our cyber program. If you are enrolled in our cyber program, you will continue to be in our cyber program. Those two, those two groups will not intersect one another. And can I jump in there too, Dr. Missit? So, sure. And that was a question I received a lot of. Can we then, you know, okay, remote learning, can we then enroll into the cyber program? At that point, we would ask that everyone continues in the remote learning and we won't be bringing people in. So it wouldn't impact our staffing and enrollment in that, in the cyber program in that setting. Cor correct. So they will not intersect one another. Great. Perfect. Uh, Dr. Missit, uh, will those that are in gifted and math, or gifted math and gifted reading be supported in the cyber environment? Great question. And um, if you are a gifted student, currently a gifted student, you know that we increase the gifted teacher allocations uh, beginning the, the next school year, 2021 school year. So yes, if your child has a GIEP for math or reading, they will receive services from their school G, um, GRT, gifted research teacher, uh, in those areas for those specially designed instruction areas for your student. Thank you. Um, next, a, a lot of questions are coming in about community. So how will cyber teachers build community with their students? And will there be an assigned teacher for a set number of students? So the first question is, how are you going to build community? In our brick and mortar buildings, we do something that is called the first 20 days of school. During the first, first 20 days of school, that teacher builds a community with the class, with each other. And it's so important those first 20 days that um, 
it is almost scripted out for the K to five teachers. They build rules. They have expectations during that time. They do community building. They do a lot of social emotional uh, lessons with their students so they get to know one another. So for our cyber program, we ask those authors that are doing our cyber curriculum to create the first 20 days online. So we have adapted the first 20 days in our brick and mortar schools to our cyber program. So it's so important to build that community, especially for our elementary kids. Perfect. The second Thank you. question, oh. Ashley, will you repeat the second question? I, I did not write uh, it down. Sure. Will there be a dedicated number of students per teacher? Thank you, Ashley. Yes, there will be. Uh, we have a ratio, as it was explained in the presentation. Uh, it's a guideline for those, those student-teacher ratios, and we will follow the same type of guideline in our cyber school. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Eberly, can you please briefly explain how reading support will be handled uh, within the cyber program? And that's for, okay, so we will assess all of our students. Um, we would do that in the brick and mortar as well as in the cyber program. And if a child qualifies with the criteria that we utilize as a district um, for reading support, yes, we will act absolutely be providing reading support for our cyber students. And we have reading specialists who will work with those students, um, likely through mostly live small group differentiated lessons um, via Zoom. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Stanlin mentioned that elementary school students would still have access to additional activities. Um, what would elementary school ban look like within the cyber program? A great question. Yes, we would have access to the band as well as the orchestra and the chorus. Um, we will be able to provide small group or one-on-one -on -one live Zoom lessons. And if a parent chooses to, they'd be able to attend their homeschool ensemble and participate in those um, practices as well as the uh, performances. Thank you. Uh, are the cyber instructors dedicated or will they be shared uh, with maybe different classrooms? Will they teach it in school as well as online or are they dedicated to a specific homeroom that is the cyber homeroom? They are dedicated to a specific homeroom. Perfect. All cyber. They will um, not be teaching in the brick and mortar setting. Uh, how will my kids interact with other students when we are at home and online? I think Ms. Mai did a nice job of talking about how important that this is for us as a district. And so through those morning meetings and through building community, and again, the first 20 days that Dr. Missit mentioned are going to be key. And then we'll do activities throughout the school year so that we are ensuring that our students are socializing and engaging with their peers in the classroom in an online environment. Okay, and then the last question here, um, a lot are saying, should I submit the form if right now I am undecided, but I do want to meet that deadline just in case I decide to commit? Mm. Dr. Messa, do you want to take this one or do you want me to? I would be happy to take it, Dr. Eberly. Um, what we would ask you to do is to consider, please consider uh, that as a true deadline. Uh, we do need to plan for staffing. And as you can see on this, uh, on this um, Zoom, there are over 700 people that are participating. So even if a small majority of those people were to uh, attend our cyber program, we, that would impact our staffing. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to fill out the interest uh, form. And then if you're very interested, we will make sure that you have the application and the agreement. Um, Dr. Ab, did you speak of the agreement? I did, yes. Excellent. The, the application and the agreement will be made uh, available to you. And then once, thank you. Thank you. Once we receive the application um, and agreement, then we would, you would hear from me as the cyber administrator to confirm that enrollment. And keep in mind that once you do enroll, um, you will stay on your home school's register uh, until it is official that you are a cyber school student. As you can imagine, that would impact the staffing at the brick and mortar school as well. Dr. Scanlon? Uh, yes, the, um, uh, the registration timeline is, is, is really important, um, as, as everybody's saying, because we, it does impact our staffing. Uh, by the end of that first week of August, we need to know uh, pretty pretty firmly how many students we'll have in the um, 
uh, in the cyber program. Uh, if we have to, if some of the, some of the sections collapse because there's a number of people coming out of one school, obviously we got to shift, uh, we got to shift staffing into, into the cyber program. Uh, and if we just have a handful of people out of each school and then, then we don't have to, uh, we don't have to shift people out of there, but, but we do need to hire some staff. Uh, we are very fortunate in our district uh, uh, to be in the position where we, we will be hiring staff next year. Uh, our, our board has already started to, uh, to budget for that uh, because we are opening a, uh, a new elementary school next year. So uh, even though that gives us the ability to hire some of the staff earlier uh, this year to help with the cyber program, uh, and if, uh, if we need to transfer people into the into brick and mortar schools next year, we, we obviously have a, a school building where we can do that. So, um, so we're, it's a very unique time for us uh, in, in order for us to, to try to look at, look at that staffing. Uh, some of the, uh, just a summary, again, if you have that interest survey, please, please make sure you fill that out. Uh, the, some of the advantages you heard about, just the schedule and how flexible the schedule is for, um, for, for this, uh, this cyber program where you have a lot of asynchronous uh, we've got uh, very exciting people uh, in, in the program. You, you, you heard from Kristen and Matt uh, and many of their colleagues who have been excitingly working on the digital curriculum. I know somebody had asked about, do we have all of that curriculum uh, written? We have all the curriculum because it is, it is our curriculum. It's just a matter of formatting it in a digital format to be up on discussion boards, to have some of the videos that are done. Uh, and again, we have a, a, a a very collaborative staff that last spring created a lot of our digital curriculum during the uh, the emergency remote learning. So we actually saved a lot of that. We've done a lot of training where we've recorded some of the training sessions. So uh, so as a district wide uh, professional learning community, we do have uh, we do have a lot of people working together uh, to finish all of that up. Seesaw and Schoology, you see that uh, that is also something that we have been using. Those are not new for any of our teachers. Uh, we have probably been six years using Schoology in grades three through 12, and uh, that's our learning management platform to deliver digital curriculum. And also Seesaw has been around for about five years for K to two. So the fact that we have many teachers who are, who are already using that, it's just a matter of, of how we're gonna use that in terms of, of delivering the curriculum. Uh, July 20th, just as a reminder, uh, that is Monday evening, we will have a special education session that's at six o'clock. And there should be a Zoom link on our website for that, for those of you that have uh, some, some special needs children and uh, to see how we deliver the special education services uh, over, the, over the cyber platform. Uh, again, we are uh, excited about this, this opportunity. Uh, we think we are, are absolutely ready to meet the needs of, of all the children. And, and for people who are just uh, kind of worried about going in and out of, of uh, a remote schedule, Schedule versus a brick and mortar schedule part time. Um, the cyber program gives you that opportunity to have a, have a curriculum delivered to your door. Uh, we do need parents to help and support the kids because of the age of the kids, especially at elementary. Uh, but but you will have teachers then giving feedback, teachers checking in, uh, counselors are available, uh, social workers are available. So all of the services that that we provide at our our brick and mortar schools are also available on our, in our cyber program. So uh, you, you get the backing of, of, our, of our school district and all those services there. So thank you so much for, for coming out this evening and uh, please make sure if you're interested, fill out the interest survey. Uh, and again, by the, uh, by the end of uh, the first week of, of August, uh, we, we do need to some firm commitments because we've got to very quickly put our staffing plans in place before we start school, which is scheduled to take place on August 31st. So thanks so much for coming out. Have a great rest of the evening and, and have a great weekend. Have a good night, everyone.